Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. It is Tay from Garrett and Tay and I'm wearing the same outfit as the last video I filmed because I was doing a story time and it ended up being way too long. I had to break them up into two. I was basically giving you guys an update on Salted Road and what's been going on and why it's taking so long because a lot of people just have no idea. All the permits and every... Just dealing with people is sometimes the hardest part. Any obstacle, honestly, I've gone through with Salted Road has literally been relying on somebody else to do something. A lot of times it's been a good experience but I've also had a lot of bad experiences with other people. If you haven't seen that other video I posted about shipping the trailer here and everything that went wrong with that, you should go watch that. I'll link it up in one of these corners wherever that shows up. But now I'm gonna talk about the inspections, the health and LNI inspection. We actually failed both of them and I kind of gave you guys an overview on what happened but I didn't really explain it in full detail. Like I said in the other video, sometimes you guys say things that are just like not helpful. Usually the people that say stuff like that have never opened a business before so they're, they just don't understand what goes into it and sometimes you just can't foresee something happening and at that point you just have to make a decision to fix the problem instead of being like, oh you shoulda done this, you shoulda done this. Like yeah, shoulda, coulda, woulda but here we are and we got to fix the problem that's kind of what I've been dealing with the past few months so basically where the other story left off was shipping it here was a nightmare I'm never shipping anything ever again by the time the trailer got here it is a coffee mobile coffee bar if you don't know what I'm doing I have been opening this bar for like a few years it's been a long process because I've hit a lot of road bumps I've been screwed over by people you know it's it's been a journey I am like nearly nearly open and I just like to share my stories with other people so they can see like the realities of opening a business Business because I feel like a lot of people just talk about the positives which there are a lot of positives but there's also a lot of really hard things and times where you're gonna be like um I don't know what I just bit off I don't know if I bit off more than I can chew there's just a lot to be prepared for nothing is impossible if you have the mindset that you just have to fix it if anything goes wrong which it will because that's like business in a nutshell. By the time the trailer got here, it was January. And at that point, like I said in the other video, we had to fix the signs, get whole new signs made, which you know, everything takes like three days to a week to accomplish. Every time you add on time, 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 it's like, that's how so many months go by. You know what I mean? So in January, we started fixing the signs. We had to fix the front of the trailer because they dropped it, super sucky. We had to fix some other things inside. Not a lot of stuff happened, but some plumbing was leaking. And a couple things had shifted, even though they were bolted down. Just because, again, don't go blaming Mark, because Mark was our builder and he's awesome he's been involved in this whole process like I said in the other video he made the trailer and he's from Arkansas we shipped it to Washington he's been involved in this whole time and it's so normal for you to have like leaks and stuff like that regularly when you're a mobile business because you're being shifted just like even if it's ever so slightly as you're on the road think about stuff screwed together like obviously it's gonna start to unscrew things will shift inside it's just normal that's the kind of stuff we expected but ended up having to replace some of the plumbing because things were leaking we had antifreeze in the system because it was the middle of winter we actually had like a big snowstorm in Washington and ran out of power and I didn't have the generator set up yet basically you'd have to keep the heat on the whole time in the trailer for the pipes not to freeze with all the water inside so we kept the antifreeze Oh. Yeah, at that point we're fixing things here and there and I don't know how to fix stuff I would like to learn and I've actually learned so much more than I ever thought I would about electricity and plumbing in the past few months It's April now when I'm filming this we've been working on a lot of that stuff and I've been involved in like watching My dad's uh, friend is our handyman and he's the one that's been helping us a lot with all of this That said because there's a lot of stuff that just like my dad and I don't know how to do We've been relying on somebody else's schedule He's one of those people that I've been super grateful to work with in that case like you can only do work when he's available to do work I would work on other stuff you know Monday through Friday or whatever he could come sometimes in the evenings randomly but he travels a lot for work so he's gone and he's home on weekends and so we'd mostly do stuff every Saturday in the freezing cold <sighs> this is when it gets so fun so then we think we're all good the whole like health pre-inspection we had gone through working with the state city county whatever can be super difficult sometimes just because they're very particular I think Washington is I actually know this. Washington is one of the strictest states as far as our code, which is good in a sense because you know that businesses here are held to a higher standard and we have very strict codes and all of that. However, to get your stuff passed, sometimes it's kind of frustrating because like I am a low risk trailer because I don't have any food. I only have prepackaged food. So I don't have any like danger of like bacteria growth in food or preparation or any of that because I simply don't have it. However, I am held to pretty much the same standards as like a full blown food truck. 
even though I don't need a lot of the stuff that they need. We've had to put a lot into the trailer even though some of it doesn't necessarily apply to us. Like we have to have a lot of the fire safety codes and stuff which I know it's like obviously you should be safe but like we don't even have propane. We don't have anything that can start a fire in our trailers. The other food trucks they have propane that's why they have all those codes and you need to have your exits and there's certain measurements for every single thing. I don't think people know how intense the codes are. You have to go to it by a T. They're very strict. I've actually had a pretty good experience with them being very nice. They've been very nice and helpful but they are very strict they do not let things go like you need to do it by the book when we had our inspections I really thought we were good I was like we might fail just because my whole experience has been nothing has gone right but I didn't really think we would fail just because I was like confident in everything it all looked good it was clean and I had read through all of the codes for L and I and for the health inspection every single code we had a whole pre-inspection checklist binder with the health department and they had approved it so like I just thought we were good to go you know what I mean and with L and I because we're a low risk they actually let us sign off as plan exempt and they give us notes on like certain things that we could change because we were low risk so we still had high expectations on our codes but there were some things they were leaning on and our builder actually had all of our codes for L and I and for health inspections we should have been good should have been our health inspection comes out and he comes out to the house and we don't pass and I was like only not surprised because that's kind of how my life goes is it's like oh it's not going to be easy for you which i think a lot of people think that i don't know why a lot of people think i get things easy and that's not the case i just work for them and i work for them until i get what i want literally we failed twice like he came out twice and we've had to fix a lot of stuff so that's what's going on we still don't know why we had to fix a lot of stuff it's i think just because it's washington i don't know i'm still kind of baffled by the whole thing and everyone that we've come in contact with has also been baffled by the whole thing so january been fixing stuff blah blah blah, blah. beginning of april in march i can't remember when we had our first inspection it was a few weeks ago though we had waited to plan events until the end of april because i was like there's no way we won't be ready by then but i was wrong and we've had to cancel events which really sucks because i'm like a big person of my word and i want to do what i say i'm gonna do and i don't want to let anybody down and i paid money to be at a lot of these events and i've had to cancel them so i just lose money by doing that well i really thought i was playing it safe because i've seen some comments people saying why did you even plan events if you weren't if you didn't pass or whatever we we really didn't foresee that we wouldn't pass because we had gone by the codes and everything was done by code but what you'll see here is I'm not talking smack to any of the inspectors but I will say that they like it the way they like it it's just like there's so much room for interpretation and I think that's what the problem is is when you read these codes you're like oh we I don't even know an example for you all the words are like so technical but it's like you think you plumbed it right and you may have legally plumbed it right but the inspector came in and basically said, I don't like that. I want you to change it to this and change that to this and move this here. Just because that's what he's used to seeing. They pretty much want everyone to have the same exact picture perfect plumbing system in Washington state, which is what I'm grasping. So I ended up calling Mark after I'm like, uh, we didn't pass our inspection. And he thought I was kidding because he's never had an inspection not pass. And I was like, well, glad I could be your first. What an honor. What they had told us, the inspector was actually being really nice. And he's like, I really wanted you to pass. I was hoping you would. And we had our L and I inspection first because you have to do that before the health. And then we went to health and they basically, that stuff wasn't really a big deal. They wanted us to change just like the, the hose we were using for the gray water tank, but they simply can't pass us until L and I passes us. We're like kind of pass through health department we just have to send them a picture of our l and i sticker on our trailer once we get that that's not really that big of a deal but we ended up doing that and they wanted us to change a couple things that were minor but it was mostly just like getting a different hose and a different hookup for our gray water with l and i they wanted us to pretty much restructure all of our plumbing and he had told me at the very end he said only passes one percent of the first inspection on anyone really tough inspector he's he's been helpful but just i think we got like the most tough one we could have gotten <laughs> he even said to us he said this stuff all looks great it's just not what i want to see which really sucks because it's like this person works for the state and you can't argue that you can't argue the law like it is what it is and we tried seeing if he could see it a different way and he'd say like well i see how that could work but i want you to change it is essentially how our conversation went just kind of frustrating because it's like what we had wasn't wrong so some people even like don't want people to blame mark because he's been great and he's been helpful throughout this whole process but they've blamed him saying like well why did you pay all this money and then it didn't even pass it it should have we're all baffled and you'll see even because when we bring it to our plumber he's like i don't know why you guys didn't pass i don't know they just 
I don't know. That's <laughs> just how things go, I guess. Then the struggle was we had to pay both times. The guy came out the first time and it's like $200 every time they come and look at it, even if you don't pass. So money just racks up and time racks up because you're also dependent on everyone's schedules. You have to schedule it ahead of time, make sure they can fit you in their schedule. And then when I send it off to the health department, it takes them one to two days to process that. So it's like time just builds up, money just builds up. That's just the way it rolls. So we had to find a plumber to do the work and specifically an RV guy is what he said to find is an RV repair man. The plumbing we have since we're an old camper trailer, it's not just like traditional. It's not like a building and it's not like a normal structure, like a food truck, which are a lot more simple to work because they're literally just like boxes ours is a little bit more difficult because it is like an rv and we needed to get like an under belly gray tank and all of that mounted on we didn't have that before it was inside which could have been fine he just said he preferred it outside so his preferences cost us a lot of money so we ended up having to restructure all the plumbing put in different pipes change the direction of things now there's a lot more pipes in there used to be a lot more air gaps and a lot more p traps and vents and all of that we had to put a vent through the roof which i don't know why we didn't have one but now we have one the hard part was actually finding someone that could fit us into their schedule because so last minute and i was trying to get it done in a week which that wasn't possible because we ended up finding someone that could do the work for us but he had literally he has like 20 30 rvs on his property right now like he's a super busy guy but ended up fitting it in for us so we're really grateful for that at the same time he had to order all of the products and everything get them in some of them didn't work he had to send them back order new ones so again more time builds up nothing ever takes what you think it's gonna take it'll take longer it'll be more expensive that's the lesson I've learned fast forward to where we are now basically we've kept in touch with our inspector he actually has been so nice even though I wish he didn't make us do all of this he's been nice basically along the whole way I would call him and be like hey we want to make sure this is gonna pass like next time you come in guaranteed is this okay for us to do this? And he's like, yeah, that's okay. So he's been really good about helping us along the way to get everything to be exactly what he wants it to be so that we're not just playing the guessing game and then he's gonna come back in and fail us again, you know? And the positive is that I've learned a lot more than I thought I would ever know about plumbing. Um, I learned more about electricity. We also had to change electricity, but that was cool because that company actually came out the next day. They were available right away. And that was like a super easy fix. It just was like replacing some wires that had been damaged. It's always good to know more. And now that, that I kind of understand plumbing, I feel like I could almost, like I could repair it if something comes off, I'll just go buy the part and put it back in. That's kind of where we're at now. And like where we're at today, currently the 25th of April, the RV guy has had our trailer for about a week and we've had to cancel two events. One of them being like the biggest event in the state. And then actually we've canceled three events. We're gonna have a regular location a few times a week. And I've also been working with City of Olympia and the City of Lacey to be approved in those. And again, they take their time getting back to you. So even though I've sent in my applications a few days ago, I just have to wait for them to tell me that I'm good to go. Like I said, you're really just relying on a lot of people a lot of the time, their time, even though I contact them like every day. I do stay on them. I call people every day, email them every day and make sure that they're keeping us in their mind and getting everything done. It's been hard to cancel on people because people are excited about us to be at events and I really hate to be someone that flakes out. So I'm just really hoping that we get done as soon as possible. The trailer's supposed to be done today. As soon as we get it, I'm just concerned to call the inspector and something else go wrong with the trailer and not be able to have that inspection. So as soon as I am notified that the trailer is done for sure then I'm gonna call the inspector right away and schedule that inspection for hopefully tomorrow but again with the state they're closed on weekends so you want to get everything in on the week because I want to be ready by next week hopefully because it takes like I said even if if tomorrow's Friday if L and I comes in and they approve our inspection I still have to tell health department and it takes them one to two days to process that and then we're official. So it still is another three, four days until we're legal to serve. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight on like the reality of everything just because I think people don't really know all that goes into it or I think people think I'm just like doing this all day and that's not the case. I am constantly like putting out fires but I'm hoping that there's no more fires. But I do feel kind of like superwoman because we've gone through a lot and even our plumber was looking at it and he said this was beautiful work. So to Mark, I don't know if he watches these but like he did good work. He's like this looked good. I don't know why it didn't pass and we're all like, I don't know, that's the state for ya. Like 
because they work in the state all the time and they thought that it was a good job you know what i mean and like they're professional plumbers so it all has been kind of just shocking but at the same time i've mentioned this in another video before but health department told us that we are the first of our kind in thurston county so in our county they've never had to go through this process of a mobile uh, a mobile food unit that's made out of an old trailer camper trailer so they're used to literally seeing things so black and white everyone just has normal like box you know food trucks or whatever which there's nothing wrong with that but i wanted to bring something different but there's a price you pay when you bring something different into an area because like we're literally paving the way because they've never seen anything like this before they're like we don't even know like how that would work but we'll figure it out like that's pretty much the response i get all the time or they tell me like like mark said i've never had a trailer fail before and i'm like well of course it's mine all of that it's just been kind of a journey and i've learned to just kind of laugh at it because there's always going to be stuff that comes up but like it doesn't mean that you have to give up you just get through it and figure it out i've learned a lot and i will continue to learn a lot but i am so ready to like just be out on the road and like make this thing happen and make money and make coffee thank you for watching our journey if you're not already following salted road on instagram you should at salted road coffee and i will see you guys in the next video Thank <laughs> you.